Good morning, and welcome to the STJC Virtual Worship Service, where our pastor, Reverend Alvin Smith, and First Lady, Reverend B. Smith, and the entire STJC family are so glad that you chose to join us today. The month of April marks Child Abuse Awareness Month. Take some time out to learn about the signs of child abuse and how to prevent or report it. April is also Donate Life Awareness Month. We want to bring awareness to the impact of organ donation and the need to improve support to those so desperately waiting for life-saving donations. Consider being an organ dona donor if you have not done so already. We pray that something is said, sung, or presented that will encourage you throughout the week. Please feel free to like, share, or comment.
Most holy and righteous Father, we thank you for this day you've brought to light. Allow us to rejoice and be glad in it. We pray that you will continue to cover your people. Keep us as only you can. Lord, in this day of new beginning, bring clarity to our faith. Speak as we give ear to hear. Give us the ability to embrace all that you are saying that we might move with futurity. That is the ability of all you've purposed. Lord, thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, St. James. Our scripture today is from the book of John, chapter 20, verse 15. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Hear what Christ our Savior saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We are so grateful to you, our partners in ministry. With your donation today, we can continue to give personal care products to veterans, tents to persons who need a warm, dry, and safe place to sleep, provide hot meals to homeless encampments, and deliver food using contactless delivery. To ensure transportation is not a problem, we assist seniors and our homebound neighbors to obtain COVID vaccinations. Every child deserves a book, so we adopted schools giving every kindergartner their own book. Your gift helps us to expand our network of hope and help. To donate, simply use Givelify or the Zelle app on your cell phone or on your computer. Transfer funds from your account to our email address. You may click the link in the post, call the office to make arrangements to donate, or send a check or money order to the church. Check on your family neighbors and friends. Let them know you care. God bless you and thank you for your generosity. Hi, I'm Pastor Al. We're so excited because in the midst of darkness, despair, we have a campaign of hope we have designed a mask saying BDA, brighter days ahead, found in Job the 11th chapter, the 17th verse. 
For the mask, it's only $10 plus a dollar for shipping. Won't you join us and spread a message of hope? Surpasses 
all understanding And you are the reason I'm still standing my life It's nothing without you Praises go up Every time I think about you Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good good coming to you from San Antonio, Texas this morning. So glad to be with you in the house of the Lord. I'm going to talk briefly about Jesus and, and the resurrection and some of his expectations and what he, what he termed the marks of the church. And then I'm going to share a story about how important we are to the Messiah. Um, my scripture comes from John chapter 20, verse 15. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've laid him and I will take him away. Jesus turned, said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. You know, when we think over the things that Jesus did during his brief life on earth, the Apostle John remarked that if we were all to put down it all in writing, the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. That means that we just have a glimpse of what Jesus did. Jesus did so many miraculous things, so many powerful things, said so many things in the three and a half years of his ministry, it was impossible to put them down. And we sometimes forget that as we're looking through. But there were some things he said that were important, some things he emphasized, some things that were included in the gospel that as, as we read them. And from the gospel, John, I'm going to bring you three things he said. He, on the night before he was, died, before, was to die, Jesus had to select from all his lessons and teachings a few key, key points particular points that he wanted his apostles to remember. 
He could have talked to them in length about theology, got into a deep theological discussion, but he didn't. He could have talked to them about tithes and offerings and good stewardship in the church, but he didn't. He could have talked about the sacraments of the church and all those interesting things, but he didn't. He could have talked to them and made sure, hey, make sure you go to church all the time. But he didn't. He could have scolded them for all the mistakes they had made during their time with him. But he didn't. No. Jesus decided to take that time to show them exactly what it it meant to be the church. He told them exactly what it was they needed to do to be the church. And, and, and what he put down was, was so phenomenal, was so careful, so just interesting. He told them first that um, they would have to be servants of all. And he graphically displayed that and demonstrated what that looked like. He also carefully explained to them three things that would distinguish the church and faithful members of the church from other people. Now, what I'm about to tell you will rock your world. It's going to mess with your religion. You know, Pastor Smith may never allow me to preach in front of y'all again. The elder may never speak to me again. The bishop may decide we need to have Reverend Martin examined. But what I'm going to tell you is from the word of God as spoken by Jesus. So I want you I want you to hear these three things. The three marks of the church. The first is separation from the world. John 15, 18, and 19 states this. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. That means that people aren't going to like you. People shouldn't like you. They shouldn't like the church because they hated Jesus. If they hate Jesus, people saw them call themselves Christians or Christ-like are going to be hated just as well. So don't be surprised by that. Don't, don't get, don't get all upset because people don't like you. They hated Jesus before they hated you. It comes with the territory. See, if you get into a place where the world likes you and the world treats you nice and the world treats you with respect and the world does all these nice things to you, you're in trouble because that means you're not being the church. See, in America right now, we're, we're, we're mad because the schools are turning against us and everybody's, uh, nobody likes religion anymore. Nobody wants to go to church. Everybody bashes Christians and, and some of it, some of the stuff we've caused ourselves. But don't be upset by that. Don't be dismayed by that because that's the way it's supposed to be. That is the natural order of things. They hate Jesus, so they're going to hate you. The world doesn't like Jesus. That's why I try to paint him up like some some wimp and all this kind of stuff. And and he's you know the blonde haired, blue eyed you know hippie. He ain't none of those things because they want to to picture a Jesus that's weak and wasn't able to to carry things and wasn't able to take care of business. Jesus was none of those things. He was a powerful man and both physically and spiritually. And they hated him. They still hate him and will always hate him. So don't, don't be afraid with that. They start hating you. Okay. You know, yeah, great. Hate me. I, I must be doing what Jesus told me to do. Because they hate me. The second thing he said was you have to have unconditional love. John 13, 34, and 35. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. He didn't say if you follow the doctrine and discipline, they'll know you're my disciples. He didn't say if you give tithes and offerings, uh, hallelujah, they'll know you're my disciples. He didn't say if you get up and get your praise on. No, they will know you're my disciples because you love one another. That means Sister Pookie 
that you don't particularly like, you need to get that, get that corrected. You're supposed to like fellow Christians. If you're, a, if you're a Democrat and you don't like Republican Christians, you're wrong. If you're a Republican and you don't like Democrat Christians, you're wrong. We're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to work in unity together. We're all trying to supposedly get the world saved. If you have any other agenda than making people disciples of Jesus Christ, you're wrong. They'll know you're his disciples. They will know that you follow Jesus when you have love for one another. Mm, mm, mm. That means the sister sitting next to you, that you don't, don't think you have the side eye, you're supposed to have love for her. Mm -hmm. That means Pastor Smith, when you get mad at him, you're supposed to have love for him. That means the elder, the bishop, the stewards, the trustees, the, the, the usher within the church, everybody, everybody who's in the church claim to be a Christian, we should be loving each other. Mm, mm, mm. Some of y'all that, that messed up, some of y'all ain't going to be able to sleep tonight. Because there's somebody in the church you've wronged and you need to get it right. You have to love one another inside the church. So the third thing. Obedient trust. John 14, 1 and 21. You believe in God, believe also in me. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. Woo, man. Mm, mm, mm. Jesus is going to make it hard. We got we to gotta obey his commandments, church. We got to obey. That, that mean, that, that's wow. What commandments? Okay. Let me make this real simple for you. I'm going to start with two. And only two. If you, if you keep these two, you're going to be fine because you, you're going to get them all. You ready? Got, got, your, got your pen and pad out, your notes? This, these are, you never heard these verses before. I, I'm, I'm telling you, y'all, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no other commandments greater than these. What? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. See, we say him in church, but we don't follow him. We don't love God with everything we have. We don't. If we did, we'd act, we'd act better. We'd be living a life. When you love God with everything, when you love him with all your heart, your mind, soul, strength, everything, you worship and praise him. You're always constantly praying. You're always constantly thanking him. And what starts to happen is you start to become Christ-like and you start to reflect his image out to the world. You start to reflect his image to people. You start to reflect his image to other folks and you love your neighbors as yourself. The world is your neighbor. That means you can't hate white folks. You can't hate black folks or Hispanic or Asians. You got to love people. You have to love God and you have to love people and you have to love God more than you love people or you can't, you'll never be able to love people. You have to love God more than you love your, your, your spouse or your significant other. You got to love God more than that secret sin. That one that is in the closet that nobody knows about. Oh, I'm not talking about any particular group. All of us, all of us have those secret sin sins that we're glad God doesn't tell anybody about. You have to love God more than you love that. More than you love anything. You have to love God more than you love the Amy church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's deep love. That's the kind of love he's talking about. When John wrote these words, it was near the end of the first century. And the second century was kind of like the first century. The Christians all, all were a people that, that, that served God totally. If you were a disciple, you were a disciple. You served God with everything you had, and you loved your neighbor as yourself. You just did it. It was just part of the, what they did. Jesus said no one can serve two masters, and they didn't try. But... In modern times, since about 300 or so A.D., we have tried to prove Jesus wrong 
that we can serve two masters. And that's how the church has gotten themselves in trouble. We have told ourselves that we can have, have the things of the world and the things of God. Mm -mm -mm. Many of us live our lives no differently than non-Christians. Except for the fact we go to church regularly each week. Maybe. Let me say that again. Many of us live our lives like no differently than the other the non Christians we know, except we may go to church every week. We watch the same entertainment, we share the same concerns about the problems of this world. We're frequently just as involved in the world's commercial and materialistic pursuits. Often our being not of this world exists in theory more than in practice. Mm, 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 mm. But the church was not originally like that. The first Christians lived under a completely different set of pr principles and values than the rest of mankind. They rejected the world's entertainment. They rejected the world's honors. They rejected the world's riches. They were already citizens of another kingdom. Woo, Lord. The kingdom of Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed king. And they listened to his voice instead of the world's voice. They didn't listen to the government. They listened to the Messiah. So in the first two centuries, they had it right. Because the earth wasn't their home, the early Christians could say without reservation like Paul, to live as Christ and to die as gain. Just a martyr who was martyred, hence, his, hence the, the surname they gave him, explained to the Romans, since our thoughts are not fixed on the present, we are not concerned when men put us to death. Death is a debt we must all pay anyway. To live as Christ, to die as gain. Mm -mm -mm. Three marks of the church. Separation from the world, don't be part of the world. Unconditional love, love the disciples of Jesus. Obedient trust, obey his commandments. Now what's interesting with Jesus is Jesus has, has a habit of coming into situations when we think we're at our wits end, when we think everything's lost, we're totally discouraged and showing up. Because Jesus cares about his disciples. He knows their name. He knows each and every name of every disciple. He, he does. He knows your name. Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Because she thought he was the gardener. Why'd she think that? Because she was crying. She said to him, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have him, have put him, and I will take him. She, she hey, hey, let this, the tears were coming down so strong, so hard, that she couldn't see who he was. And then Jesus said to her, Mary. And she knew instantly who it was. See, Jesus knows your name. I'm not sure who's out there that needs to hear this, but Jesus knows your name. See, Mary was distraught. She's out of weeks, week, week, weeks, week. She's out of wit, wit's end. She didn't know what to do. She's troubled and distressed and desperate. But Jesus, when he called her name, she knew who he was. He knows his name. He knew her name. He knows your name. See, you may be down right now. You're just coming off of Easter and you should be feeling good, but you're not. You're feeling depressed. You're faking the funk. And you're not sure that Jesus cares about you. You're not sure that, that he really loves you. You're not sure what's going on. You've seen the church People have done hurtful things to you inside the church. But I want you to know that Jesus knows your name. I want to thank you for your generosity as partners in our ministry. We continue to feed the hungry through our food distribution 
provide clothing for those who are homeless, assist in our community projects with distribution of face masks and caring for our first responders and essential workers. We invite you to sow into our ministry by Giveify, an app on your cell phone, Zelle, where you can transfer funds, or you may mail, you may mail your gift to the church. Details are in the chat room. Lastly, we would like to thank you for a moment of your time. The Lord willing, we'll see you next week. Same time, same station. And remember, you are love. God bless you. See you next week. May the love of the Father, the grace and mercy of the Son, and the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of you now and forevermore. Let all God's people say, Amen.